Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke chapter 16 and I'll be reading verses 19 through 31. This is a story that Jesus tells and this is what it says. There was a certain rich man who clothed himself in purple and fine linen and who feasted luxuriously every day. At his gate lay a certain poor man named Lazarus who was covered with sores. Lazarus longed to eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Instead, dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried by angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. While being tormented in the place of the dead, he looked up and saw Abraham at a distance with Lazarus at his side. He shouted, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I'm suffering in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, Remember that during your lifetime you received good things, whereas Lazarus received terrible things. Now Lazarus is being comforted and you are in great pain. Moreover, a great crevasse has been fixed between us and you. Those who wish to cross it over from here to you cannot. Neither can anyone cross over from there to us. The rich man said, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house. I have five brothers. He needs to warn them so that they don't come to this place of agony. Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. They must listen to them. The rich man said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will change their hearts and lives. Abraham said, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. Pray with me. Jesus, you're here among us now this day. May we never take that for granted. But instead, here in worship, Lord, provide, provide space, space enough that we might hear your voice and see your hands. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. When I was in college, I had a good friend named Billy. Billy was a good guy. And... Uh, he was hilarious to be around. He, he told the funniest stories ever. And um, I, except for one kind of story that he would often tell. And at the end of his story, they would end by, and then my father came home drunk and punted me across the room. And, well, he would laugh and laugh and laugh. But really more than anything, it was just awkward. Well, I remember at spring break, there were a bunch of us that were standing around the fire. We were counting stars and swapping stories. And, and, and Billy jumped into one of his drunk daddy stories and, and he finished it up the same way that he always did. And then my father came home drunk and punted me across the room. And he laughed and laughed and, and nobody else did. And then, and then when it was quiet, just under his breath, he said, you know, if God came to my father the way he did Paul, maybe my father would change and quit beating on my family. I, Billy had a point there. I don't know if you remember the, the story of 
of Saul, who changed his name to Paul. Saul was a persecutor of the church. He was, he went from town to town and church to church to lock up Christians, to make sure that they were put in shackles. And in Acts chapter 70, there's a story where, where Saul is holding the coats of those who are throwing boulders at a Christian named Stephen and, until they finally kill him. He's an accessory to murder. And I mean, you talk about a dark heart. And then in Acts chapter 9, it's, it's, it's Saul who's on the road to Damascus. And while he's on that road, there's this, this light that shines from heaven. And it's, a, it's a blinding light. And, and this booming voice comes and says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul says, who are you? And he said, Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Well, I mean, Billy had a point. If God stepped up his game just a little bit and and, and, and there was a, a blinding lights and booming voices, I think people would change more than just their name. They'd behave a little better. And, and, and you know, if, it, if a, a blinding light or a booming voice came to his father, yeah. I, I think he would change his ways. Or if it's like Moses, you know, there was a, a burning bush and, and, and the voice of God coming from a burning bush. Yeah, I think people would behave a little better. Or at least they drive better. You know, I, I think Billy had a point there. You know, that, that if God just stepped up his game and there were a few more miracles, and then a few more blinding lights, booming voices, and burning bushes, well, I, I think things would change. I think they would. Did you know Jesus tells a story about that? We read about it this morning. That the story starts off of a rich man who clothed himself in purple and fine linen. Well, what in the world does that mean? It means he didn't have just one nice suit. It means he had a, a, a new suit for every day of the week. And not only that, he feasted luxuriously every day. That means he didn't just eat steak on the weekends. It meant he had steak for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. He was wack, wagyu wild. He, he, whenever he wanted steak, he had steak. Well, there was a fellow at the end of his driveway, and the fellow's name was Lazarus. Lazarus didn't want suits. He, he had sores. He didn't have steak. He, he just wanted a mushroom that would fall off the table. He just wanted the gristle. He wanted just any crumb. Well, he didn't even have the crumbs. Well, Lazarus died. And Jesus says that, he went to Abraham's side. Well, where is Abraham's side? Well, the Jews had this rich picture about what happened when you died. They didn't know the furniture in heaven or the paint colors in paradise, but they did have this picture that Abraham, Abraham was, was a friend of God is what the Bible calls it. He was father of the faith. It was Abraham who, who listened to God in the everyday in the ordinary. It was Abraham who... who who leaned on God, who relied on God, who followed God. And, and they figured, well, that when you died, if you were a friend of God, and if you leaned on God, relied on God, that, well, you went wherever it was that Abraham was. And that's what we find right here, that Lazarus is, is not just in the general vicinity of Abraham, he's at Abraham's side. And Abraham is tending to Lazarus' sores. He's that close to Abraham. Well, the rich man dies. And the rich man looks across and he sees Abraham and, and he, he kind of looks through Lazarus to see it. He, do, he doesn't really see Lazarus at all. And he doesn't realize exactly where he is, so he's calling out orders like he did on earth. And he says, Abraham, send your boy Lazarus over here. Give me a little bit of that water. I'm hot. Well, he was hot because he was in being tormented in the place of the dead. Now, some of your Bibles may have translated that as Hades. So that was more than just a little bit hot. Some of your Bibles may have translated it as hell. Some of your Bibles may have translated it as Gehenna. And that was a part of that, 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 that rich image that the Jews carried about 
what happened if you, you weren't a friend of God? If you didn't rely on God, if you didn't lean on God, that, that, that word Gehenna is a, is a word play on Hinnom. And Hinnom was the valley that was b- below Jerusalem. In a word, it was the dump. And they figured if you, if you didn't follow God, if you didn't lean on God, if you weren't a friend of God, that you'd go to the dump when you died. And the dump wasn't just, you know, where you might get a, f- a few things that were useful. No, this was where if you had a dead donkey, you'd just push it over the hill down there and burn it in the dump. That if, if that's where the sewage went. That's where everything awful went and they would burn it. So if this is a place where just to breathe in the air burned your throat. Just to open your eyes would sting your eyes. And that's where the rich man was. And, and he's calling out, send your boy Lazarus over here. Give me a re- little relief. And that's when Abraham says to the rich man, he says, child, remember that during your lifetime, you had suits and he had sores. Remember that during your lifetime you had steak and he just wanted a piece of gristle. But he didn't even get that. And if he wanted to go over there to you, there's this crevasse between us and you and he can't. And by the way, if you want to come over there to us, you can't. Well, that's when the rich man realizes where he is. And he says, whoa, 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 Father Abraham, I have five brothers at home. Send them to my father's house and warn them. If, if they see someone coming from the dead, if they, they see that, that blinding light, that booming voice, that burning bush, then they'll, their hearts will be changed. Then they'll believe. And Abraham says, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, Neither will they be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. Here's the hook. Jesus is pointing to himself. It's Jesus who rose from the dead. And if, if, if they don't hear Moses and the prophet, who in the world is Moses and the prophet? Moses, was traditions has wrote the first five books of the Bible and and. Sometimes they didn't call it the first five books of the Bible. Sometimes they just called it Moses. Who are the prophets? Well, they're the four major and 12 minor prophets of the Old Testament. If they don't listen to the voice of God in the Bible, they won't listen to someone who, who rises from the dead. Do you hear what their request is? Do you hear what their request is? Paint my brothers into a corner. Make them behave without believing. Make them change without following God. Give them a blinding light. Give them a booming voice. And here Jesus points to himself. Jesus says, all of Scripture bears witness of me. Jesus says, Moses wrote of me. Jesus is the fire. And, well, behavior is the light. Jesus is the fire and love is the heat. But so often our world cries out, give me the light and give me the heat, but Jesus you can keep. We don't we really want our, our lives changed or transformed. Really what we want is the benefit of the light and of the heat. Give me good without God. Give me love without the Lord. And we live in a, a world today that... Well, we don't mind it if people are good. We don't mind it if they love, as long as they love what we want them to love and we're good in the way that we want them to be good. It's okay. But there is no good. There is no love. There is no fire. There is no light. There is no, there is no light. There is no heat without the fire. And Jesus is the fire. So often we want to change my family Changing my friends, change the, the people around me. And if you want to change me, that's fine, but do it without Jesus. It's here in worship. Here in worship that we lift a vision of Jesus, that Jesus is the hope of the world. Changed behavior is not. It's, it's what follows. Jesus is the hope of the world. And C.S. Lewis says, 
Every human love claims for itself divine authority. Jesus is the divine authority. And it's here in Scripture that we lift up His authority. It's here in Scripture that, and, and in worship that we join together to get a vision of who Jesus is. It's here in worship, in Scripture, that our eyes are drawn, that we might not just stand by the fire, but that we might know the fire. And that the light and heat might follow. This morning, it may be that um, you've been close enough, so you think, to the church that you can see how your, your behavior might be better. But you haven't known the fire. You haven't called on Jesus or it may be that love, you, 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 got, you have an idea about how life might be better if, if, if you were to love, but you haven't gotten the heat of love. It hasn't become a, a part of your life. That you're close enough where you can see it, but it's not, Jesus' life is not a part of your life. And that this morning, here in the opening of Scripture and in, in, in worship, you've gotten that nudge. You've gotten that, that shake that you've heard the, the whisper of the voice of Jesus. This morning, I want to pray with you. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, so often we like that vision of good without God. We like that vision of love without the Lord. But there's no such thing. There's no such thing as, 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 as light and heat, Lord, without you, the fire. Holy Spirit, touch us with the, those tongues of fire that we might not just change our behavior, but we might be made like you, transformed. And that this day might be the, the first day of it. Breathe your life into our lives. That we might come to know you. To walk with you. Be a friend of God. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir. 
an organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.